Welcome to another Tone Tuesday, where we discuss tone, we talk about tone and tone and nothing but. So modelling, I came late to the modelling party. Um, you know, I've been playing guitar since, you know, I was just 16 and um, that was 1990. And uh, so by the turn of the century, I was 10 years in and, uh, you know, I had a I had a um, I had a set rig. I used Marshall amps and I used Fender amps and Vox amps, but El Pico was my favourite amp. If you can go out and find El Pico, do so. I'm telling you this because I've got many subscribers. It's not something that I'd really want people to know because there's fuck all left now, you know, that's like not been discovered. But look into El Pico amps. Um, you know, from the 50s and 60s and 70s, made in Italy. Um, not far off of Vox AC4s, 15s and 30s. Just an incredible little valve head. Um, I actually did manage to get a couple when, in 2016, after massive chaos of homelessness and bullshit, you know, I built again from scratch, literally, I had an acoustic guitar. And um, I started from scratch and I got myself like a couple of El Pico heads, which I actually ended up trading and getting this which is the Fender Superchamp XD, which I got purely for the fact that I could use it now. I didn't need to buy cabs because I was skin. Yeah. And it was like a little combo. It was a champ, very fond of champs. And the fact that, you know, I was in a tiny flat and I could, you know, you could drive a champ. But I bought this for channel one, which is just a pure straight, you know, class A tube champ. No bullshit. But when I actually got it home and was playing it and tinkering with it, I ended up in the modelling section all the time. And so that was it in 2016. That's how I sort of slipped down the modelling rabbit hole. Up to that point, I'd never accepted it. You know, when the Line 6 come out, you know, the pod stuff and all that, um, I just couldn't get a good sound out of it. But it wasn't because the pod was crap, it was because I was crap. Because I wasn't opening my mind up to the possibilities. Because now, on that same equipment, I can get really, I can get perfectly all right sounds. I would, I would use a, a light, the first edition Line 6 pod in a heartbeat. I wouldn't have any hesitation, I wouldn't worry about it. It's not my preferred route, but I would have no fucking trouble. I'd be happy as Larry. Now it's early. So, first off, modelling must never be, con you know, confused as something that's, that's in conflict with doing it in the traditional way. Okay, um, Mad Malco, the dear Mad Malco channel, he's not like a big fan of modelling, but it's not that he's not a fan, he just doesn't, that's not something he himself uses. But he has like a little laney cub and he has a soft tech, soft tech that he can put into his, you know, 4 by 12 at rehearsals. Um, you know, he's kind of set, that's the sound that he has. It's only that, like, Malco, if you're watching, if you were getting into recording and for whatever reason, like, you could only do it in the middle of the night, okay, in, in like, a shared house or something. Modelling would be something you, you turn your mind more into. <laughs> and while you probably couldn't capture your, like, Laney Cub, um, you know, because a Laney Cub with a five-foot lead, a good guitar, that's all you fucking need, all right? That, that's all you need. But you can't record with it at three o'clock in the morning. That is one thing I'll say. Um, and for beginners... You know, who knows if that's the way they're going to want to go. So it's like, the idea of like a modelling amp or any kind of modelling platform, especially for beginners, is attractive because it's like, oh, I like a fuzz pedal. Because mm. you can't buy a pedal every fucking day. Well, some people can. But, oh, I like this. I, I like the Roland Jazz Chorus. Do you see what I'm saying? Through modelling, you can find out what you do like. Um, but... The fact is, Malco, I'm telling you, I reckon I could get close to your little laney if you did it, if you were put to a push. I, in fact, you, with your Yamaha, little Yamaha Magic Stomp, if you were pushed into a crush and you had to record with it, those horrible drive sounds that you were getting with the factory presets, you dig your way through them and you find the little diamonds in the sound and you get something close to your cup. And, you know, intelligent man, knows his tones, easily would do it. Um, but for those that, you know, can't fuck around with loads of gear, it's like, 
how good is modeling? You know, how close is it to the real thing? And that's what today is really about. Um, I'm going to do a lot about modeling down, down the line, different platforms. Today, it's the simple, humble Vox VT20 Plus from a few years ago. They've done a new one since, the X, which has got a wonderful facility to uh, use your mobile as a tone room. And I'm going to be using a simple tube screamer and metal zone. And we're going to be comparing the tube screamer and the metal zone to the models of that in the Vox VT20. So, um, first off, let me be honest, this is a uh, vintage overdrive, which is a MAB signature pedal from the Thomas Lion Engineering. Um, MAB is a fucking lunatic. He knows what he's doing. Um, what he's done is put a tube stream in a box, which has got like a boost setting. And the boost setting is something I actually, is almost like a secret sauce for me. It's a big thud, it gives you a big thud. But I'm going to switch out of that into the standard... Um, Standard tube screamer setting, which I believe is a clone of a TS-808. Um, well, I'm sure it is because it sounds identical to my other clone of a TS-808. So let's start off with the real tube. Right, oh, amp-wise first. So I'm in the Vox VT20. It's in a blackface Fender clean mode. I can't remember which one, 60s clean or something. I'm using my LCDF type. I'm in, I'm in the humbucker, and that's what it sounds like. Sounds anything. So this is the tube screamer, the real one. <laughs> the model of the same to the uh, one on the floor, back to the real one. Back to the model. So what do you think? Do you think they're close? Alright. So that's your tube screamer. Now we're gonna I'm gonna do a tone Tuesday on the tube screamer because as you can hear from that, there's very specific qualities about the Tube Screamer which really are unique to the Tube Screamer, pretty much. Um, and it's why I use it as a pedal, usually with another pedal. And I'll explain that on another time Tuesday, so look out for that, because uh, the Tube Screamer totally deserves an episode. It's a complicated pedal, an easy one to love, an easy one to hate, but I think, uh, yeah, it deserves a look at. Right. Now we're going to go to the metal zone, the venerable metal zone. My MT2 is much beloved, okay? It's one of my favourite fucking pedals on the planet. And, uh... Okay, so we're going to go... They call it metal distortion on the, um, the VT20. And they call the tube screamer 
It's called tube overdrive. It's pretty easy to work it out. So this is um, this is the real one. <laughs> And now, let's try the fake one, the modelling one. And now back to the real one. to the model. And back to the real one. What do you think? Are they close? All right. So what you have is, is it's there or thereabouts. You've got to be very hard hearted not to give credit to modeling technology these days. And that is a very affordable platform. Um, for, for a songwriter, it's a remarkable tool for someone who's just you know, crazy about a tone like myself. I mean, I live and breathe, you know. Um. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's wonderful. And the other thing is, for me personally, okay, I'm, I'm on a very tight funds, built the studio, it's a guitarist studio, but, you know, I play all the instruments. I'm a songwriter, for mostly a songwriter, a singer-songwriter is mostly what I am. But, like, the guitar is an absolute passion. Um... I haven't got five grand to go flinging around for clons. <laughs> I haven't even got fifteen quid to get fifteen hundred quid to get a KTR, right? Uh, I'll, I'll maybe get the TC Electronics, um, the one that they're doing that's just come out. But if the Tube Screamer and the Metal Zone on that Vox are that close, how close is the clon model that there is on there? So it's given me an opportunity that I wouldn't otherwise have. So that's something else. I've got three modelling platforms. Between the three, you know, between the three of them, I've got everything I need. I could live without ever being re, you know, just for recording, just for recording. I could live without ever having a real rig. Um, but I wouldn't want to. But that's really all I've got to say today. Is that today was just a demonstration on like, you know, don't knock modelling, don't knock it, and you know, try it, um, because. I think it's bad to say anything is crap. No, it's not. Um, the best craftsmen know how to use all the tools available to them to the utmost of their skill. That is what the best craftsman does. Um, a, cr a really great cr that, that people, you know, We might be fussing, might, might like good tools, but we can all work with crap ones if we have to as well, right? A great craftsman crafts great art, like never blames his tools. You get the analogies I'm making, right? <laughs> but um, yeah, this has been a this has been a, a Tone Tuesday, really for me, um, to make a statement about where I am as a player, as much as anything else. Is that yeah, I've gone down this modelling rabbit hole, and I use it. I also love real things. I mean, my favourite sound at the moment is actually what's set up on the floor right now. Um, the uh, <coughs> the metal zone with the tube screamer in the Michelangelo Batio boost mode is my favourite sound. It is just so goddamn thunk, thunk, thunk. It is a heavy sound. I'll demonstrate it soon. Um, look out for other episodes because there will be more 
because um, you know it's amazing on the YouTube universe how quickly a week goes by. But uh, love you very much. Oh, I would never forget you. Uh, I will do the Vox Stomp Lab demo soon. Promise.